1971, the dietary concern in terms of relation to health was concern with heart disease that, uh, let's put it bluntly, bad fats, these are saturated fats and trans isomers and things like that, were considered to be the major cause of atherosclerosis and hence coronary heart disease. So knowing that it, all fat is not bad and that DHA is, comes from a fat source, uh, I was deeply concerned that unless something was done about changing the paradigm and changing the paradigm of food production so that it actually targeted the growth of the brain, that the brain would be next. So I wrote this book, What We Eat Today, and I published it with my wife. And Graham Rose wrote in the Sunday Times that if these guys are right and nothing is done, we're going to become a race of morons. And of course, nothing was done. So the prediction we made was that if you don't do anything, the brain's next. Now, uh, that is exactly what has happened. And it is very scary. One of the major concerns I have is this preponderance of omega-3 deficiency in, in the world, and especially in the United States. An absolute lack of seafood consumption has led to this, and excessive amounts of omega-6 fatty acids have led to this. And we've known this for, for quite a few years. We've been testing blood for 30 plus years and have seen these kind of patterns, but, but only more recently in the past 10 years, we've started to know that, that hearts need omega-3 to be healthy, that brains need omega-3 to be healthy, and that the incidence of things like depression and aggression and violence uh, Dr. Joe Hiblin from the National Institutes of Health talks about this, are related to omega-3 deficiency. We have now uh, what I consider to be a vast excess of omega-6 fatty acids. And the reason we have a vast excess of them is we now grow soybeans and corn in huge and vast abundance. We are bodies out of balance. And om eating more omega-3s helps get our body back in balance. What we know is that the omega-6 hormones are more potent, more dynamic than the omega-3 hormones. They both do similar things, but when they go to a receptor, the receptor sort of responds this way to the omega-3, and it responds that way to an omega-6. So you know, the brain only has so much space, right? If you push the omega-6 fatty acids in, you're pushing the omega-3 fatty acids out. So you can do a couple things to push back. You know, you can eat less omega-6 fatty acids and you can actively choose to restore your brain with omega-3 fatty acids. Your first medicine is food. And if the food is balanced, you prevent the cause of the signs and symptoms that everybody's paying all these money to treat. And I, I must use this line in my practice four or five times a day. You need an oil change. I'll look at my patients right in the eye, say, Joe, you need an oil change. Like an old car, you need an oil change. You've got to boost your omega-3s. So the types of oils and the types of fats you choose to eat actually become who you are. And by what I mean who you are, actually become your brain and therefore become your emotions, become your concentration, and you really become your personality and, and who you are. A lot of people that we encounter think they're doing the right things, and God bless them, they are living healthily, but, but optimization of your omega-3 and omega-6 levels is something that's incredibly important to health. And that simple little test, that little blood spot test, can tell you whether or not you have healthy levels of these fatty acids and whether or not you need to eat more omega-3 or reduce your omega-6 fatty acid intake. So I always leave them with the message, as I do with my emails, to say, remember, nix the six and eat the three.